Those are training kata, or training bunkai, sometimes some context, some history, some stories from the past can enrich our experience, give us some context. So if we look at our, our banners up here, on the far left we have our karate, we have three representatives from the art of karate. And the middle gentleman, Gichin Funakoshi, is probably the most famous karate practitioner of all time. Simply because if it wasn't for him, karate would not have spread all over the world like it did, right? So Gichin Funakoshi was the person who spearheaded this movement which made karate popular all over the planet. He had a teacher. He didn't come up with karate himself. His teacher, his name was Anko Itosu. And Anko Itosu is uh, important because he was the one who took karate and plugged it into the school system so kids in the, that, that day and age were doing karate as PE in school. So what Anko Itosu had to do, he's Gichu Funakoshi's instructor, was take this karate combative idea and put it in a way, present it in a way that school kids could do it. So pinons were created, pinon katas. And so we were we were studying and looking at pinon shoran kata. Then we take a look at pinon shoran, we took a, a section of the middle section, and we did an analysis. So let's talk about Anko Itosu, the guy who created the pinons. So if you were gonna create a kata based on what you knew and what you knew worked for you, you may pull on some of your strengths, some of your own attributes. So here's a story about Anko Itosu. It's described that he was average height, and then he had a big, broad, big chest, big chested guy, broad shoulders. People described him as an, having an unusual power, like a superpower, just grip strength. If he grabbed you, you knew it. That was a thing that got your attention just simply his grip. Some people said that he could take a stalk of bamboo and just crush it in his hand. This is where we get to the legend, right? It's kind of cool. That's like super uh, human power right there, right? Superpowers. So a lot of the stories have this legend, a little bit of, you know, make-believe incorporated with some real stuff. One night, the story goes, Anko Itosu is sleeping in his house or resting in the evening and he hears a ruckus out front. So he checks it out. He goes outside and at his front gate he recognizes there's a burglar trying to break in through his front gate. So he sneaks up. Burglar doesn't know he's on the other side of the gate. And Anko Itosu, the karate expert, punches a hole right through his own gate and then grips the burglar on the other side and restrains him with the grip strength until help can arrive and they can take this guy and haul him away. What do you think? True story? It's a cool story, right? This is like superhero stuff. Punch a hole through the gate, grab a guy, and just hold him there with your death grip until the authorities can arrive. I think the legend or the story is simply to come get this message across. He was an impressive figure that the average person would look at him practicing his skill and go, this is like a superhero, right? So now he's attributed with superhero ability. And he probably did have a very impressive grip, that when he gripped you, it was something to behold, right? There's more than one story about simply his grip strength. So in this middle section of the kata, we turn, we block, sweep the eyes, grip, pull him in, punch, re-grip, Hold him across, punch. You can see some of these ideas of simply utilizing gripping to pull and manhandle somebody from point A to point B. Which may have been the idea of the form, it may be just our own ideas of our analysis, but it does fit with the story of utilizing gripping in battle. A lot of karate, Okinawan karate bunkai are not long range. They're close range. And whenever you're in close range, you've got to grip onto people, grab. So having good grip strength would be very beneficial. 